This is lesson 3.2, Angles and Parallel Lines. Your objectives are to use theorems to determine relationships between angle pairs and use algebra to find angle measures. So when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the following pairs of angles are congruent. Corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, and alternate exterior angles. Also, consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So just remember, the first three pairs are congruent, so you can make their measures equal. And consecutive interior angles are supplementary, so they'll add up to 180. Another thing to keep in mind here with these pictures is that when parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the acute angles will be the same. The obtuse angles will be the same, and if you have one of each, those will be supplementary. So acutes are equal, obtuses are equal, and one of each adds up to 180. One final thing to remember that you might see is that in addition to those three angle pairs, vertical angles are still congruent. And in addition to consecutive interior angles, linear pairs are also supplementary. In the figure, the measure of angle 9 equals 80 and the measure of angle 5 equals 68. Find the measure of each angle. So in this figure, those two lines are parallel, but lines P and Q are not. So we're going to have to keep these separate. We have two different sets of parallel lines being cut by a transversal. So we have one set of eight angles on transversal P and another set on transversal Q. So let's keep those separate. Measure of angle 9 is 80 degrees and the measure of angle 5 is 68 degrees. In the top group, all acute angles will be 80 and to make 180, all obtuse angles would have to be 100. In the bottom set, the ones on transversal Q, all acute angles will be 68 degrees, and all obtuse angles, to make 180, will be 112 degrees. So just make sure, if you have some lines parallel, and some lines not parallel, that you separate the ones that are not parallel. Work them independently of one another. Once you fill all the angle measures in, go ahead and match up what the questions are asking and give them the angle measure that they're looking for. Sometimes you're given angle measures with algebraic expressions. So, when parallel lines are cut by a transversal, remember, corresponding angles are congruent, alternate interior angles are congruent, alternate exterior angles are congruent, and consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So, pair up the angles according to what type they are, and then make your equation. When you're working on these, make sure that you're using just one variable per equation whenever possible. Keep your x's together in one equation, your y's together. You don't want x's and y's in the same equation, or else you'd be having to solve a system of equations. Most of the ones you'll see here, if not all of them, you'll be able to use one variable per equation. So just keep an eye out for those, pair them up. Are they equal? Or do they add up to 180? Find the value of the variables in each figure. Explain your reasoning. Well, in number one, we have a triangle that has a segment inside it that's parallel to the base. If you need to, extend the parallel lines and the transversal so that it looks more like two parallel lines cut by a transversal and it sometimes makes your angle pairs easier to see. We have two angles with X and one angle with Y. 
Let's look at the x angles first. Those are both in the top right of each group, so they're corresponding angles, and they're congruent. So those measures will be equal to each other. 5x minus 5 equals 4x plus 10. We'll solve that for x. Subtract 4x from each side. x minus 5 equals 10. Add 5 to each side. And x is 15. Since they were corresponding angles, we made their measures equal to each other and solved. Now for y. I have one angle with y in it. I don't want to pair it up with one of the x angles because I want only one variable per equation. So let's substitute 15 in for x and see what 4x plus 10 equals. 4 times 15 plus 10 is 70. So that's a 70 degree angle. Now what special angle pair do those two make? Those are consecutive interior angles, and they're supplementary, so we can add their measures up to equal 180. 6y minus 4 plus 70 equals 180. Since they're consecutive interiors, those are supplementary, so their measures add up to equal 180. Let's solve this. Combine like terms, negative 4 plus 70 is 66. Subtract 66 from both sides. And divide both sides by 6. Y is 19. So the first angle pair was corresponding angles. Those are congruent, so their measures equal each other. The second pair was consecutive interior angles. Those measures add up to equal 180. Identify the angle pair and set up your equation accordingly. Number two. Here I have a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides. And I've got the four angles here. If you have to, extend the parallel lines. And I have one transversal on the left and one transversal on the right. Since the transversals are not parallel, let's keep them separate from each other. Look at the x angles first. Those are on the right hand transversal. Those are inside the two lines and on the same side of the transversal, those are consecutive interior angles. And they're supplementary. So those angles add up to equal 180. Remember, consecutive interior angles add up to 180. Solve that for x. 15x and 10x make 25x. Subtract 30 from each side. And divide by 25. x is 6. Since they were consecutive interior angles, they're supplementary, so we make their measures add up to equal 180. The other two angles are on the other transversal. Those are also between the parallel lines on the same side of the transversal. So those are also consecutive interior angles, which are supplementary. So those angle measures add up to equal 180 as well. 90 plus 18 is 108. Subtract 108 from each side. and divide by 3. Y is 24. So we had consecutive interior angles, which are supplementary, so their measures add up to equal 180. Determine the angle pair, and then either make them equal each other, or make them add up to 180.